Welcome to this lesson on memo and rich edit controls. So let's get into it. So we're going to be talking about these two components and what would be the reasons where we want to use them. So firstly, they work very similar. So that's why I'm covering them both. But the rich edit's got a few more extra properties, but we'll, we'll get to that later. So first of all, this allows for multiple lines of text. In the past, you might have been using a edit control to take in just someone's name or just a couple of lines or some or a couple of uh, words, for example. But if you want multiple lines, particularly when, when you want to display multiple lines of information, then the memo and the rich edits are probably your better components to be able to do that. So uh, what do, we have a rich edit, which is has a few more extra formatting options. For example, because of rich edits, you can make things bold, you can change the color of some of the text, so you can get into those properties if you want to make something look really fancy inside of that component, but the memo is a straight up text. So for the memo, you normally find it in the standard tool palette. It's one of the standard ones. It will be right there, the most commonly used ones there. Um, and when we rename them, remember we always try to give it a nice little prefix so that it's easy to identify. And we, I like to use the mem prefix, although it's a memo control. And then the rich edit, that is not in the standard tool palette. You'll have to go look under Win32 for it, or you can search for it. And when I use it, we normally use the RED uh, prefix so that we know that we are dealing with a rich edit control. So how do we use them? How do we put values and get values into these components? Well, if you remember an edit control, an edit box, we use the text property to put a value into the edit control and to get from that. Now, a memo control also has a text property, but it has the text for everything that's in that memo control. So if there's multiple lines, the text property will contain all of those lines. So it's not really ideal to change the text property. That's not really the idea of what we want to use. So when I want to display something that's in the uh, memo control, then maybe that would be a good option. Say I want to show a message, all of the information that's in a memo control. Then I can use the text property to save, my, to save some time. That wouldn't be a problem. Um, but if you want to put in line by line, that's normally the idea behind a memo control. We put in a line and then later on we put in a new line and that type of thing. So for that, we're going to use the following um, properties of the memo control, the following procedures. So first of all, we're going to say the memo's name, whatever it is. In this case, it's called mem display. And then we're going to say dot lines because we are adding multiple lines to this memo control. So we can say dot lines. Then we're going to say dot add. So we want to add a line to the memo control. Now, you might think, okay, well, after this, we're going to put a colon equal to sign for the assign statement to say we're going to equal like we would do with the edit control, but it's slightly different. This is a procedure. In other words, we call it like this, and we just have brackets, and whatever we want to add to the memo control is a parameter in those brackets. So there we can see the word hello. We want to add the word hello to the memo control as a new line. You'll notice that it's a string, that value has to be a string. So if I do that line again, memo.display.lines.add, and I have goodbye as another string, if I add both those two lines of code, the first line will say hello, and then a brand new line will say the word goodbye. So that's how you add multiple lines. But as I said, you must remember that the value the per, in that parameter, in the brackets, that parameter must be a string value as a whole. So you could easily do something like this, as long as that S name, you see we add in a variable now, instead of an actual string, we add in a variable. That's okay, as long as, yes, that S name variable is a string. You can't uh, combine strings and integers, like for example, this case. If we've got a variable and we say S name is a string, but our number is an integer, that's going to be a problem. That's going to give you an error, but we can still do it. How do we do it? Well, we've got to convert it to a string like you would normally do in an edit control. So that's fine. So just remember to do that whenever you are adding lines to a memo display. And the same thing goes for rich edit controls. They have the same properties that you can use. So just a little tip as well, some things that you might not be aware of. There are two codes that you can use if you want to use tabs and new lines. So for example, if you want to use a tab, for those of you who know on your computer, when you press tab, it jumps like a, a certain distance uh, to, the, to the right normally. Uh, that you can use the hash nine code. So for example, if we want to put a tab between our name variable and our surname variable, you would take the name variable and then you would add a hash nine and then add 
the, the next string, which would be S surname, and that would put a tab between the name and the surname so that all the surnames would be nicely lined up on the same level normally. And then you also, so it looks something like that. So if, I got, if S name was Bruce and S surname was Banner, there would be like a big gap. It wouldn't be a space. It would be like a relatively good gap there. Okay, so there's a nice example of what it's going to look like. Now, there is also a hash 13 um, code, and that is for a new line. That means whatever comes after the hash 13 will be placed on a brand new line. So if I had the exact same scenario as what I had previously, but instead of a hash 9, I had a hash 13. So S name was Bruce and S surname was Banner. If I put that into a member control, it's going to look something like that, where Bruce is on the one line and Banner is on a brand new line. That would save me having to go memo display dot lines of add s name, memo display dot lines of add surname. So that would do the same exact thing. So let's go have a look and see how we do these things in an actual Delphi program. Okay, so here we got a little program. There I've got a memo control. So let's put my mouse over it so we can see it. See there, it's a T memo, and this is a T rich edit. Now, if you are looking for the memo, so if you're looking for it, if you can't find it, you go to standard. If you're looking for a particular movie, you know why I say a movie? Because there it is. It's Finding Memo. You just found the memo. So there's Finding Memo. So it's under standard. So you can always go get the memo control there. And if you go further down, you can go past all of them to Win32. You can go, hey, there's the rich edit. So you can always find those components. If You, you can also search for it. So if you said rich edits you can probably find it that way as well so that's how you can get uh, the controls that you want from the tool palette so if you click on one we can see all the properties we can see that there's a name that we put put a nice prefix in it you remember the lines now we can set those lines at design time by clicking on lines and then clicking on that ellipse and then you can actually put in your values that you want to put in like you can say the word hello and goodbye and you can pre-put them in so that they're there at the start at design time so those are properties that you can use and so on um, you'll notice there is no i don't think there's a caption so you remember there's no caption if i go down here to text you can't access the text property here um, but it is available to you so let's have a look let's try some codes over here i've got enter text now what i've done is when you click on this button i've used the input box to go get a value and we are just going to change the text property to whatever the input uh, value is that we've given as a from the input box. So whatever we type in, we'll go into to that variable and we're just going to make the text whatever that variable is. And I want to show you how that text property works. So we run it, see if it works. Shouldn't be any errors, it was working just now. So there we go, there's our program. Um, so we can see what's in the memo control at the moment. It's called mem display. Now, if I enter text, now if I enter in this hello everyone, I want you to notice what happens to the memo control. You see how everything disappeared, and the only thing that's in the memo control is what is in the text, because that text property represents everything. So if I change it up, if I say, you know what, I'm not going to say dot text, I'm going to say dot lines dot add. And remember, you can't say colon equal to because this is a parameter. It needs a parameter. So in brackets, I'm going to put the S input. So that's a slight different way of thinking. Whenever you're adding, adding values to the memo control, it's lines.add. If I do that way, instead of changing the text property, then you'll notice over here when I enter text and I say, hello, everyone, it won't get rid of what's currently there. It'll just take that hello, everyone, and add it onto the bottom. And if I click on it again and type in something else like uh, Mr. Long, it will just keep on adding them to the bottom of that memo control. But it, later on, if we wanted to, we could always just show message uh, mem display dot text. So there is the text property. Now, when we display the text, it will display everything. So what's going to happen now is when we add this hello everyone it will add it onto the memo control to what's currently there so hello goodbye hello everyone will be in the memo control but when we show message the text property will show everything that's in the memo control so there it added it so we can see it added one line but now when we show message it shows everything because that's what the text property has it has everything that's in the memo control so there we go so that's how you add values um, another little thing that you can do, a little thing that you might not be aware of, you can 
if you want to make sure that there's all, whatever you type in is, is at the top um, with regard to like you want to get rid of whatever's in the memory control there is a mem display dot clear option and that option gets rid of whatever's currently in the memory control I think we're going to use it in our next button so let's use this one so tabs and new line so let's use this one there we're going to say s name is Bruce Banner and our number is 97 and we're going to clear the rich editor now we're going to be working in this one over here and we're going to say s name is Bruce Banner that's a number and there you can see an example of adding a string variable with a number variable remember as long as we convert it and there's going to be a space between them and we every time we click on this button it will clear the memory control so it'll never add on at the bottom because it's always clearing it make sure nothing's in it and then adding the value so let's just see what it looks like then we run it so there's just a space between the name and the number so that's the only thing that's different between the two there we go let it run so when we say tabs new lines there we go bruce banner space nine seven fantastic so let's change it up let's go i don't want that space i want to put a hash nine now between them still have pluses around it still treated as like a string if we add the hash nine code and you'll notice now it's a much bigger gap because that is a tab space and if i change that to a 13 we would see that it would be Bruce Banner and then a brand new line 97 so that's how you can use your tabs now speaking of tabs yeah I've got a lovely little example uh, so I've, I've added a name and surname and I've added a whole bunch of names and a whole bunch of surnames with some hash nines in between so that should be all nicely lined up so let's go have a look into what that looks like I'm gonna go hey tab example and you can go oh I, I can see the tabs I can see but sometimes when the surname is too long the next it actually gets too close to the next tab that it actually jumps to the the, the the second tab and so this actually doesn't look very nice so although we've got our tab set up because our our data is quite um varied in the length it's actually affecting our tabs i would like this tab to be up here but i don't want to say tab tab which i could do i could say plus hash nine plus hash nine so that it jumps up twice but then i i would need to try to calculate when it needs to do that because if it's too short it needs to do two hash nines but if it's too long it only needs one that's quite complicated so what i'm going to do instead is go you know what one of the features of a rich edit you can't do this with the memory control but you can do it with a rich edit and that's one of the nice things about Richie, is you can set the tabs so what i'm going to do here on this button is i'm going to say clear the rich edit and we are going to set a tab now you will first say paragraph dot tab count and how many tabs you want to set and this is very similar to our radio group if you remember radio groups the first value started at item index zero the same thing yeah the first tab is at position zero so we set the tab count to one so we want to set one tab and therefore we will have position zero would be where that tab is and you can give it a particular value in like uh, that'll say where it must be the tab so we want 60 places and that's where the first tab must be so if I set the tabs manually, if I go, I want the tab to be not there, I want it to be somewhere like over here. So if we display, you see it's all, all over the show. But now if I set the tab, it clears everything and it set the tab somewhere over there. We can't see it. But if we go and do the tab example again, ah, look how nicely that's lined up. Because we set the tab to 60 somewhere over here. Okay, so that's a lot nicer. And if we had multiple tabs, let's say we had three tabs, then you could just go, okay, let's do three and then we set tab one which is tab zero and then the second tab is tab one and the third tab is tab two and so you actually set values for them so that can be spaced out so that's how you can set multiple tabs obviously clear it and then you can set them and that'll be a nice little effect for when you lay out your data in nice little columns other properties just so if you want to get a particular line maybe let's so we want to get a particular line in a rich edit for example you can say lines dot strings and in square brackets you have a number now what does that number mean I've got a funny feeling it's like with those um, zero it starts at zero so let's do this tab example well, let's first set the tab and then tab example so we want to display number four so one two three four that's the fourth line but if the first one is a zero then it'll be zero one two three four so that's the fourth line 
But if we're looking for line four and it starts at zero, then it's going to display that rather. So let's see what it does. It's going to just show message the fourth one. You see, it showed the this one over there. It showed this one over there, that one. So therefore, we can see that the first string will be at position zero, the second string at position one, and so on. So that's how you can get a particular string. Sometimes, though, just to take note of, if you're going to be adding lots of data to your memo control, so let's, let's just, I'm going to make this smaller on purpose, and I'm going to add some lots of gobbledygook here just to make it quite long. Lots of lines. Oh, lots of lines, lots of lines, lots of lines. Oh, all gobbledygook. And now you can see, now it doesn't all fit. Now, if you run it, it's going to be okay. You can still access it. Um, you're just going to have to click on the memory control and go down. But when it runs, come on. But when it goes down, you can go, eh, but it's, it's quite awkward. So what, what a nice little property sometimes to do is to click on the memory control and go right down here to scroll bars and make sure you give it some scrollies, I call them. So you give them vertical scroll bars so that at least that way you can... Uh, Scroll up and down on the memo control. You can go, hey, there we go. And the same thing with your control over here. We can give them scrollies. If you want to, if you make the memo control too wide, you can give them horizontal scrollies, or both, or both if you want, or you can give them uh, just a vertical or horizontal. With the rich edit, it doesn't display the scrollies until you've actually used up enough space to use them. So that's just something to be aware of. So there we go. Those are. The things you need to know about a memo control and rich edit. For more videos on uh, RT related stuff like Delphi, go to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on uh, Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.